splendid, marvellous, pip pip tally ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos and hit the bell. It's really important you hit the bell, otherwise it doesn't inform you when I upload a new video, which is not very often, it's only like what, every few weeks. And today we're in Shepherd's Bush. Um, it's called Shepherd's Bush because this is where supposedly the shepherds used to stop and rest on their way up towards Smithfield Market with all their sheep and cattle or whatever to go and have them slaughtered. Um, but some people say it might just be named after a bloke called Shepard who owned the area. Uh, no one really knows. Yeah, by 1967, they, uh, they built this um, West 12 shopping centre. I remember it when I was a kid. And there used to be a bridge. Do you remember the bridge that used to go over the road there? It was like a walkway that went all the way over there. So in the 90s, they removed the, the bridge, which led straight over to the station. And by the start of the 20th century, this whole green had become home to the destitute and MP Sir William Bull was appalled to see people playing games like pitch and toss here. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have to flick a penny against the wall or something and you, 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 whoever gets the penny closer. We used to call it penny up. Oh, I want a game of penny up. Makes you feel so Victorian. But in 1962, Wilfred Bramble from Steptoe and Son. He's also in Hard Day's Night, isn't he? Wilfred Bramble. Yes, that's right. Yes, the older, the older gentleman, the oh, granddad. Yeah. He was arrested in one of these. I think it might have been one of these public lavatories. It was a public lavatory around here for smiling at a policeman in the toilet. That was enough to do it. He just smiled at him. I'm not surprised. Have you seen his smile? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Did he <do> that? <laughs> 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 You'll go down the next sun. <laughs> and there was a nightclub here, look, but it looks pretty much deserted now. I don't know. Look, there's a rat. I don't know if it's still a nightclub. I believe the first electric tramways had a terminus here. And then they decided to open up the Central London Railway, which uh, which ran, well, this was a terminus. It ran from Shepherd's Bush all the way up to the Bank of England. And um, they've changed the station now, but the station was somewhere around there. Then obviously they extended that and the Central Line uses those tunnels today. Thomas Faulkner, a writer around 1800-ish, he wrote, he wrote this about the area. This pleasant village lies on the Uxbridge Road. The old house situated on Uxbridge Road was a famous inn for travellers and it was the only house standing between Acton and Kensington gravel pits. At this house, the notorious highwayman called 16 String Jack was finally taken into custody. They called him 16 String Jack because he, he wore these colourful strings on his knee breeches. But when they eventually caught him, they threw him into Newgate Prison. He was known to have entertained about seven ladies there the night before he was hanged with a kind of farewell dinner. And on the day of the execution, he engaged in cheerful banter with the hangman and the crowd, danced a little jig on the gallows, and then he was hanged. Up until like around 1860, this whole area was pretty rural. I mean, it wasn't until the arrival of the railways that they really started to build up some of these houses. So you can see a lot of these like old red brick things are mostly from the end of the 19th century. But this building here, for example, that, that, the, the, the Shepherd's Bush Empire was built in 1903. People like Charlie Chaplin performed there. They used to have music hall type stuff, but later it was bought by the BBC. And that's where they did shows like Jim Will Fix It. <laughs> Dear Jim, can you fix it? I, I actually uh, wrote to Jimmy Savile. I did, I wrote, uh, Dear Jimmel. I thought his name was Jimmel. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jimmel, hey, Jimmel fix it. They did Cracker Jack in there, Wogan. But you see, when I was a bit younger, this whole area used to be very popular with Antipodeans, um, particularly Aussies. There were so many Aussies around Shepherds, but I don't, I don't know what's happened. They seem to have moved. One of the reasons why the walkabout was so popular. Now, now, okay, there's a bus in the way, but the Palladium there started in around 1910 as uh, the Cinematograph Theatre. But I remember that as the walkabout, and that was the main head walkabout where, you know, I love the walkabout. I'm always talking about them. I don't know, full of Aussies, uh, full of people, wall to wall vomiting, drink, people making merry. Uh, there's lots of sport on the TV. You could buy an emu burger. I, I loved it. It's such a pity it's closed down, really. It's 
So we just walked up uh, Wood Lane here, and over here we've got this uh, the old village hall. Yeah. You can even see the date on it, 1898. It says I think that it was used to be the village hall, now some sort of dance studio. But um, so it's another example of all these buildings that popped up around here at the end of the 19th century. But you can actually see shrapnel on the foundation stone over there from Jerry in the Second World War. We're not walking all the way up to the other end. We're gonna go back and round and then end up at the other end of the Wood Lane. But, uh, but yeah, just next to the old village hall, which is now a dance studio, you've got this big, uh, well, kind of eyesore here. Like a, like a hospital, isn't it? Uh, no, <laughs> that's Westfield. That's the, that's the shopping centre. Massive, the world needs more shopping centres. <laughs> the world needs more shopping centres. It's got all your the main bits and bobs and it's, it's a shopping very mile. it's a shopping mile it's massive and it's uh, all new and spanking new inside so in 1908 this whole area was occupied by the franco-british exhibition which, which is actually why they call it white city you wouldn't believe what it used to look like it, there's all these beautiful buildings clad in marble it's white stucco it's like palaces yeah. with all these different exhibitions celebrating the empire and eight million people went in through the doors and visited this amazing like exhibition where you had artificial lakes <laughs> pa palaces canadian toboggan scenic mountain railways an irish village with 150 colleens who were like uh, who were like irish girls demonstrating technology at the time and sort of domestic appliances and things like that and there was a senegalese exhibition to demonstrate what a Sen senegalese village was like anyway after the First World War, it was all slowly demolished. They did, they did do a bunch of other exhibitions there, but then gradually it all got demolished. But, I mean, the main entrance was back around there where the, the tube station, Shepherd's Bush Station is, all to demonstrate empire and uh, basically put everybody down, as far as I could tell. <laughs> around 1899, this street, Hopgood Street, was built. Typical houses of the time built for the urban middle classes. Actually, that building over there is where they used to have 2020 casting, which was one of the first um, extras agencies. I was... <laughs> I, um, I, I was an extra. That was my first ever sort of TV type job thing that I did was from 2020 casting. Sorry, from that building there? Well, yeah, this is where they were. I did this job. It was for The Odyssey, and it was starring Greater Sachi, Sketchy, however you say it. I never saw it, didn't have cable TV or anything. About 20 years later, drunk on my sofa, just going like, uh, and then at about two in the morning, this thing came on, and it said, oh, The Odyssey starring Greater Sachi. I was like, wait a minute, but wasn't I kind of in that? And so I was watching, and then sure enough, this, these doors get thrown open, and all these circus acrobats and everything walk in, and there's this hairy bloke with a big beard juggling looking completely lanky and it was me <laughs> that was from 2020 casting it's quite fun this is just the beginning of uxbridge road this didn't used to be called shepherd's bush market station i think there used to be several shepherd's bush stations and then it all got a bit confusing so now they've called this one shepherd's bush market station and opposite is a uh, shepherd's bush market let's run across some because we've got some here yeah, quick the shepherd's bush market opened in 1914. i think that they filmed parts of quadrophenia down here these are, so this is where I can come for my big pants. Yes. My, it's my, called bloomers. It's like your hat, old fashioned. These are old fashioned bloomers. There aren't many people. Yes, 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 yes. People still wear them. No plans to get rid of this market, is there? Uh, yes, there is. There are? Yes. No. Modernising. Yeah. Well, it's been here a hundred years. It's technology. It's all technology's fault. Warming up the country with technology. I know where to go to get my pants. How are you, Simon? Do, 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 you can't tell by the way I use. <laughs> See, it's actually um, Saturday Night Fever was in fact based on mods in Shepherd's Bush. I think he based, I think that the, the uh, is he called Danny? The, the uh, Tony. Tony, Tony, Tony the <laughs> Tony. He's, um, he's based on a character that used to go to the, is it, is it the uh, Hammersmith Palais? I think used to, they used to have dances and stuff down there. And he's, he's, he's based on one of the people down there. London. Yeah, no, it's based, I believe, on an article about life of uh, a young gang in Shepherd's Bush and it's successfully interpreted in, in a screenplay. Yeah. 
So now we're here on Goldhawk Road. And just at the beginning, I just want to ask if anyone knows. I've been trying to f figure out what that G&M 1906 stands for, because I've tried to find out what those were. Sorry, I don't know everything. <laughs> so if anyone knows, let us know. Not very disappointing. <laughs> Sorry. Just walking down the Devil's Highway here. I don't know why it was called the Devil's Highway, but uh, yeah, Goldhawk Road. Um, and um, back in 1657, there was a fella called Miles Syndicom, and he, he owned a house down here. I think he devised this contraption, which was, uh, I, I, I don't know, a bunch of muskets all tied to wheels or something to try and assassinate Oliver Cromwell. Um, anyway, he failed and he was hanged, I think, or um, something. But, um, but so we've been here before, haven't we, Simon? Do you remember in the uh, smallest house video? Oh, of Look course. at this! Here, number 110 is probably the narrowest house in London, don't you think? Yes. You remark that I should live here. <laughs> <laughs> You're always saying that, just because I shouldn't live in a skinny house. Hello, John got a new moat. Ah, hello, John got a new moat. Ah, hello, John got a new moat. Sorry, I haven't completely lost my mind. Do you remember, you remember Hello John Got New Moat? <laughs> Do you know that song? Alexi Sale. That's, this is where he was, he was doing a lot of Gold Hall Road. Oh, I, I was looking at the video, I recognise those houses opposite. So he's here, sort of just, Hello John Got New Moat. <laughs> he's like a complete maniac. I recognise those houses there. This was, uh, I think this was a car lot or something. Oh, I see. So yeah, he comes in here to get a car or something. Now it's uh, flats. I don't know if they're luxury flats or not. Who knows? And just coming up here, this building here, which is number, I don't know, 160 or something, it doesn't matter, it says Mark Summers outside it. This, uh, back in the 1960s, it was a, f a film studio. Films like a Bloody Beast Terror, you know, starring Peter Cushing. And they, they, they were filmed here. Um, yeah, Richard Burton, Judy Dench, Cliff Richard. And in 1978, it was bought by Richard Branson, turned into music studios and Sort of film artists like uh, Bob Dylan, The Cure, The Jam, your favourite Simon, Kate Bush, she recorded here. But now it is indeed Mark Summers casting. And Mark Summers, I actually know him because he cast me in my best ever TV commercial. He, he cast me in that IBM ad I did. Pretend to be his Scotsman. It was so embarrassing, this casting. <laughs> <laughs> because I went to the casting, they wanted everyone to do a regional accent. So I went in and I, he was an American director. I didn't think they had noticed I was crap. So I did this Scottish accent, which was hopeless. And he gave me the job. But then when we actually went up to film it in Scotland, all the crew was Scottish and there was me doing my crap. Oh, that was so embarrassing. I, I, just, I just deferred to my English accent again. There was no way I was doing it. Oh, those were the days, Simon, when I actually did used to get some acting work. I can't be bothered to go all the way up there. It's a bit of a walk because we're coming back this way. But number 205 is where the old Gold Hawk Social Club used to be, where the Who started out. The Who played there, the Animals, the Kinks. I think now it's uh, called the Shepherd's Bush Club or something. But uh, let's go back this way. Hello, John, got a new motor. Hello, John, got a new motor. So as we're walking past this beautiful bathhouse, which was um, now naturally turned into luxury flats in the 1980s, but annoyingly covered in scaffolding. But uh, right opposite where there's this big housing estate called Gaumont Terrace, this is where they um, had the Gaumont Film Studios in 1915. It was the first purpose-built film studios in Britain. They filmed like Hitchcock did, the 39 Steps there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's called Gaumont Terrace. They knocked it, flattened it all uh, later years. But I mean, in 1949, it was bought by the BBC and they used it for like the top of the pops. I think the Beatles' first ever TV performance was there. Once the BBC bought it, it was called Lime Grove Studios. Doctor Who, Steptoe and Son, things like that were filmed there. Yeah, now it's all flattened and uh, turned into it's that housing estate. But right opposite, there's quite a nice building here. This used to be a uh, like a college for women to learn trades like dressmaking, hairdressing, embroidery, other stuff. These days it's the London College of Fashion. So uh, I don't know if I mentioned we're walking up Lime Grove here. 
back in the 1850s, 60s or so, Angela Bird at Coots, who was the richest woman in England. I don't do you remember I was talking about her when we were in Hackney and in Victoria Park? Oh, she was that, that, that famous yeah. fountain yeah. that she donated. Anyway, she was um, a philanthropist and, as well, and she had bought a cottage here which is called Urania Cottage. And it was devoted to uh, fallen women, destitute prostitutes. Um, and uh, funnily enough, she was a friend of Charles Dickens and he was put in charge of you know, various running of this destitution home for the prostitutes. And uh, anyway, when he himself left his wife in 1862, he ran off with his au pair or something, there was lots of scandal and he lost his popularity for a, for a while and so they decided he couldn't be in charge here anymore. But he did lay, lay the drains, I think. Lime Grove was amongst one of like three or four of the earliest streets to be developed around here. I don't know where it was. I think it was just next to the Gaumont Film Studios. Would have looked much like these houses, I suppose. Yeah, St. Stephen's Villas, look, 1874. So yeah, these, these were amongst the earliest. It seems very Victorian. Yeah, it looks very Dickensian, all this. I could it imagine does, a, doesn't it? Yes. I don't know. Like a Dickensian haunted story yes, being set here or something. Hello. Door. Well, well you can the imagine first, there'd be the loads of bed sits back in the day as well. Imagine oh, the, the 1960s, 60s, yeah, 70s, 70s, you know. Probably. Full of families, you know, <laughs> in one room at a time. Yeah, just back here on Uxbridge Road, walking back up to Uxbridge Road. Yeah, I like the, the Bush Hall there, which was built in 1904. Some sort of dance hall. These days it's, an, it's a venue again, finally, but um, look, you see on the top you've got those, what I assume are pineapples. Many people write in to me telling me that they're actually pine cones, but I uh, am sticking by the fact that they're pineapples, which represent welcome course in the old days because pineapples were very hard to come by many years ago and uh, quite expensive so you often see those on top of there I think there's one on the top of the Wim Wimbledon trophy as well in fact that looks like the Wimbledon trophy on the roof do you think the laundrette opposite do you reckon that they actually go to laundrettefonts.com because when it's like, all laundrettes seem to have that font don't they so what are the price, what are property prices around here? This could be yeah. a new feature in Jules, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. I mean, look, share freehold, 400. That's not too bad. 575 share freeholds, three double bedrooms. I mean, seems pretty good. Easy access to central London. Bargain. You know, why am I advertising for people? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and a bit further along, they've got the Clifton House. It's another one of these homes for destitute fallen women. The hopeless outcasts of society it was founded for by the, the church army back in like the 1880s, I think. Don't know what it is these days, but just a little bit further along from there, I can highly recommend Mlishko Bakery, because I went in there the other day and they were very nice. And, uh, and it's very reasonably priced as well. I don't know if you're feeling peckish, Simon. It's not that late, actually, but I do feel we should go in and have something to eat. Hello. Hello. How, are How are you? We're fine, thank you. Mlechko. Mlechko, Polish delicatessen. Yeah, we're having everything fresh every day. We're having a little bit warm food. As well, we're having cakes, some donuts, and homemade sandwiches. Yeah, and very reasonably priced, I might add. I mean, these sandwiches, look, £1.79. I had one of these yesterday. It was excellent as well. Yeah, and it was tasty. Yeah, it was really good. Really good. Yeah, we got some hot burgers. Yeah. And, and we'll, we'll get a plain cross on as well. They've got all yeah. the uh, cabanos. Yeah, of sausages. Oh, excellent. You go. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This is chicken breast. Chicken breast. Does yes. it have a name, with, the way you've done it? With tomato, cheese. And you're the main chef here. Yes. Bravo to this lady. <laughs> so much they didn't even charge me. They didn't charge me. Yeah, no, no. Had, I know, but no, I honestly was going to pay. Had I known, I'd have asked for more. <laughs> we'll see you later. Thank you, everyone. Bye. I've been down here a few times to film like, the last few days. And I was eating there. They're, they're really nice as well. I recommend.
Do you know what this, do you recognise the streets on? I don't recognise the street, but I recognise the wall. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the street. The, the outfit should be a clue. This is where John Cleese did the famous silly walk yeah, sketch. Yeah, yeah. He comes out of a news agent up there or something. <laughs> yeah. And he is actually my height, which is probably why that looks vaguely authentic. See you later. I prefer it up this end of Uxbridge Road, actually, a bit further along the road. It's really nice, and it's such a pity because you've got that lovely bakery and you've got all these really nice-looking pubs, and, you know, normally we'd, fit, we'd be finishing in one of these pubs, but uh, we've got a bit more to do, so we're not going to be finishing around here. But that, that looks like a perfect pub for us to finish in, doesn't it, Simon? It does. Onward, this way. Yeah, Bloemfontein Road. Uh, there's a, there's also, it leads to South Africa Road, which is up here. I don't know if they were renamed or if they were originally these names. I think it's a reference to the Boer War. I have a feeling when they were developing these streets, it was probably around the time of the Boer War. I think it was to do with the Boer War, but it might have just been a reference to the British Empire again, in connection with that big exhibition at White City that they had. I mean, I don't know. See, that one over there, that sign there, just says Bloemfontein Road W. And you quite often see that around this area and in many areas where they don't have the numerical subdivision. And I'm always saying, oh, that means that the sign is a pre-1917 sign. It's not necessarily, I mean, it might be that that is a replica or something. Yeah, it does look like there's a W12 on there, but they've added that later. But I mean, the reason why it only says W instead of W12 or whatever is because... Oh, All right. <laughs> It's, it's because uh, it, it, originally it would have just said W before they introduced the W12 in 1917. Who cares? Let's go. Wait, oh, wait a minute. Look, look. You see, I told you, you spot, I didn't spot that before. Ding, points for the stink pipe. I'm telling you, I'm telling everyone around this table, that's a stink pipe. And I know what a stink pipe looks like because I've seen one up close. And you better look up on Jules Guides what a stink pipe is because I ain't going through that hell again. Do you uh, name that film, Simon? One of the great sequels of our time. Jaws 2. And yeah. I was astonished in the Guardian list of the top Steven Spielberg films that they had E.T. above Jaws. Ah, oh, just for me, no. They had listed them in, the, in order of... Mm. Yeah, pop, was it popularity, the best Steven Spielberg films? And they put E.T. above Jaws. I mean, no, Jaws for me. Got to be... And Duel. Duel, amazing film. Well, of course, I would probably put the Columbo film in that he directed. <laughs> Death Lends a Hand, isn't that the one he did? Steven Spielberg. That would have to be number one, of course. Hello. Who, are, who am I? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's the White City Estate. I think this is one of the old ones. I don't know if it was all built all back there, but I think it was started around in the 1930s. And then they had to stop during the war and it was completed after the war. I don't know. Don't ask me, I might be mistaken. But just coming up on the right here, opposite the White City Estate, is Queen's Park Rangers Football Club. It's like a swimming pool from here. Yeah, it's all blue. <laughs> <laughs> they were the one who famously had the artificial pitch in the 1980s. Do you remember? Plastic pitch. And everyone was complaining, oh, no, we've got to play QPR. They've got the plastic pitch. And Terry Venables, at one point, who was the, the manager, he, um, they, they accused him. It was said that he used to let the opponents train on the artificial pitch for practice. And then on the day of the, the actual match, he'd water it and make it all slippery and different. So it would be completely different to how they had practiced on it. I don't know if that's true, allegedly. Yeah, I'm not much of a football man, to be honest. No? What do you prefer, Simon? Snooker or something like that. Boxing? I mean, this was... This yeah, was, boxing, well, yeah, this yeah. Is the, this is the famous venue where Barry McGuigan won the, uh, the world title oh, in 1985. Okay? Yeah, he... Oh, yeah. It was here that he defeated Eusebio Pedrosa. Opposite is the, uh, the 4th Battalion Parachute Regiment or something. This is where in 1966, when uh, Muhammad Ali fought Henry Cooper, you know when he, he fought R. Henry? Muhammad Ali trained in here, for, in this building, for, for his fight against Henry Cooper. This was actually the second time they fought. I mean, the first time he fought him was, um, was as Cassius Clay. 
But Henry Cooper actually knocked him down in the ring. I think he was one of the only people to knock down Muhammad Ali. I'm not sure. Anyway, he still went on to lose the fight. I am the greatest. You even dream you whip me, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> In 1908, they built a stadium over here, just sort of around there somewhere. And uh, it was for the, the London Olympics, 1908. And they had a big swim, all, well, quite a lot of the events were held there, even swimming. So they had a swimming pool in the middle of the stadium. In 1908 Olympics is the reason why they run, what is it, 26 miles, 385 yards, the, the London Marathon? I think because it was from Windsor Castle to Shepherd's Bush and then once around the track or something to the Royal Box. The winner was an Italian pastry chef called Dorando Pietri. He was so knackered at the end though that someone had to help him across the line. But unfortunately he got disqualified because he weren't allowed to receive aid. At least he got a street named after him, I suppose. They knocked it down in 1985, which might explain why um, They've got all these 1980s looking buildings around here, I don't know. But yeah, so we've swung around and come to the other end of Wood Lane now. So uh, we're going to head down here towards where the BBC building is. So here we are outside the BBC which is why I'm talking like this. I, I still remember the address from when I used to watch Blue Peter when I was a kid. And at the end, I always used to say, oh, if you've got any bottle tops to send into the Blue Peter bottle top sort of pipeline appeal, send it to BBC TV Centre, London W12 8QT. And I always remember that. So, they, so in 1960, the BBC moved here and they finally moved out in around 2012. They've sent a lot of the stuff up to Salford. Still some of it here, but um, the main bit has gone. Yeah, just sort of plonked in the middle of this mayhem next to, amongst the uh, Westfield shopping centres. The, the Dimco buildings, listed buildings now, built in 1898. Originally, they were power stations for the, uh, for the tube. But uh, now, there, there's like a bus garage. Actually, you might recognise it from The, the Mummy, because that, that, that doubled up as the British Museum in the film The Mummy, Bren, Brendan Fraser or whatever. I want to sort of get over to the other side of the sort of motorway, but it's, it's impossible, you can't get through. So the only way for us to do it is to take the tube one stop. It's only over there. Still, strictly speaking, it used to be a part of Shepherd's Bush, so uh, I think we have to complete our journey over there. Tonight on The Equalizer, Edward Woodward is... <laughs> Sorry, it just feels like one of those dodgy <laughs> New York bloody side street alleyways, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sure they, spent, they filmed a lot of, like, the, the minder around the Shepherd's Bush, oh, didn't okay. they? Yeah, yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. Why does Edward Woodward have so many Ds in his name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because if he didn't, it'd be called Iwa Woo Woo. <laughs> well, that'd be why, though. <laughs> Between 1964 and 1970, so they built this huge, all this like motorways and stuff. That's the West Way there, and it kind of sighed through. <laughs> and then they built this massive flyover here. And around 1972, Hawkwind did a gig, like oh, just a free gig underneath the big roundabout there. Over there, see, sometimes they do films. I think that's that kind of looks like Bukayo Saka, the Arsenal player. Is that him? Looks like him. They're doing a TV commercial. Look at that, you see, I have to say, I was not expecting to see Eaton Fives courts here. What a strange place to see, you know, Eaton Fives, do you know what that is? It's a, it's a posh game that, that, you know, play in English public schools. You know, we used to have Eaton Fives, I was quite good at Eaton Fives. You know, it started in the school, in Eaton School, and people had a, a glove and you whack a ball against the wall and it's, they've got a court like this with a buttress coming out because it originated with them playing against the, the walls of the church. You see, if you look at the court, yeah. you can see these steps and buttresses and things that resembles a church, kind of. It's a really good game. Oh, they should have it in the Olympics. I mean, they've got break dancing in the Olympics now, anyway. Fancy a game of eating fives, Rupert? <laughs> Grab a glove, come on. Piss-taking bastard. It was Tarquin, anyway. And we'd ask you, you'd actually say, uh, I say, I say, I say, Tarkus, fancy a game of top step. 
on your break, you'd play top step because you needed two players on each side to play a full game of Eaton Fives. But if, they, if you only had two of you, you could just play the other guy on the top step, give you a game of top step, Simon. I was quite good at it. Yeah, it's a good game. It's better than half the rubbish that's in the Olympics these days. You'll notice that over, everything from here onwards, is, it's almost like Holland Park, really. It's kind of like more like Kensington and Holland Park area. But you can see on these things, you can see the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. So that's sort of where we are now. But I think in old money, we'd still be in Shepherd's Bush. Freston Road, Freestone Road. This is, this is named after Edward Latimer, like Latimer Road Station over there. Uh, Edward Latimer, who um, moved to his estate in, Fre in Freston, which is in Ipswich, Simon. Which is Freston Tower. Yeah, do you know that? Yes, yes I do, yes. Simon, who is from Ipswich, <laughs> you must know it. Anyway, he was a wealthy uh, land, wealthy merchant or something, back like 500 years ago or so, and he, he left a lot of ground around here um, to the people. So he didn't have any kids or something. Um, but this, yeah, this bridge here on Freeston Road, this is where um, in Withnail and I, you know, after they, get, they take the dodgy Jaguar and they drive up to go and see Uncle Monty in the countryside and they go, they drive off underneath this bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he, he's leaning out of the window. He goes, scrubbers, the little tarts, they love it. <laughs> Throw yourselves into the road, darling. You haven't got a chance. But uh, when they knocked down all these buildings over here and they built the, the, the motorway and stuff, all this was so dilapidated and there was loads of, well, this isn't corrugating iron, but things like this all the way down here. Slums and squats. The people who were squatting here declared the area the People's Republic of Freestonia and they started issuing passports and, um, and their own stamps and applying to join the United Nations and stuff like that. I lived in several different squats oh, yeah. over the years. Years, but my first one was in St Anne's Road, which I moved into in 1971. We have the people's all opposite, which was squatted. We used to have a party there of a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Then we'd have local bands playing. Didn't, um, didn't Road. Like, like Motorhead and people play in there and stuff. Absolutely. Bring your own substances. Okay. Drink <laughs> and um, magic mushrooms and. But it was squatted for years. I used to see Lemmy in the in the Kennelway pub quite often. Oh yeah, was he playing on the fruit machine? On the fruit machine, <laughs> right on the corner. That was an off license. Yeah. And there was a little old lady called Peggy. Who used to run it. All characters, a lot of them. So over there, where you can see the flyover and, and all that, just this side of the railway track. I mean, if you could see it in the beginning of Steptoe and Sons, the black and white ones, yeah. you could see him the, as a rag and bone man riding his horse and cart up that, up that road, and it is completely oh, unrecognisable. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, but look, you can tell clearly that that's sort of heading towards the really expensive... I mean, that's Holland Park, really, up there. And by contrast, this side is all the new kind of estates, yeah. these new tower blocks and stuff. Simon, they didn't knock down everything. Look, we've got down here at this end of Norland Road, you've still got these beautiful old this sort of thing you get in a period drama or something. Oh, and just over there, you can see the kind of Thames Water Tower. I would have to go over there. Oh, okay. yeah. It glows blue when, when it's working. But that's where the Norland Turnpike used to be. So in the old days, in the 1800s, there was a turnpike there, like you had to pay a toll. Yeah. But they got rid of all those turnpikes in the, the 1880s or 1870s, I think. But anyway, what of it? The Stuart Arms beckons. <laughs> Time for a pint. Cheers. Cheers, Simon. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos, and especially to hit the little bell, because the bell will notify you when I upload a new video every now and again. Don't worry, I won't hassle you. Um, and um, if you want to find out more about me, you can go over to my website, jewelsguys.com, where there's loads more um, videos, and you can soon buy um, my book, which will be coming out. Um, so it's not out yet at the time of recording, but maybe you're watching this video later. So do look out for my book, which is going to be excellent, my magnum opus. And uh, follow me on Instagram. 
uh, you know, all, all those sorts of things. Uh, see you later. See you next time.